Divorce is an emotional process, but it's very important to separate those emotions from what the legal process of the divorce is going to be. Unfortunately, the courts and the lawyers aren't able to deal with the emotional process very effectively. That's better dealt with in another arena. The problem is, is that often clients let the emotional process impact the legal process. And every day I have people ask me to do things that will feed their need for spite or for revenge. And all it ends up doing is making the the situation worse, it ends up costing them money and taking time. If they were able to separate their emotions from the legal process, I would be able to do a better job as a lawyer to help them. Knowing this, there are some important steps you should be aware of as you enter the legal arena of divorce. Try and separate out your feelings about your spouse from what you want from the divorce. During separation, be open and honest regarding financial and property matters. Start establishing an understanding of your overall financial situation. Make an inventory of household items and assets. Determine what health insurance you and your spouse had, if any, and fully understand the coverage and policy. Close joint accounts and get a copy of your credit report. If you have children, make sure you are doing all that you can to provide for their overall well-being, whether you are living with them or away from them. The first set of papers that starts your divorce is your petition and response, or in some states it's called a complaint and a response. The petitioner or the complainant is the person who starts the divorce. Those papers are prepared generally in the lawyer's office, but they're very simple. They include just the date of your marriage, your names, your children's names, and dates of birth. Those petition or complaint papers are then served on the defendant or the respondent, depending on what your state happens to call that person. To see those papers and to see it in black and white really makes it seem real, and that can be upsetting. If you're the person serving the papers, please take that into account. There are ways that you can have the papers served, sometimes through the mail, sometimes the other person can come and pick them up at the lawyer's office, and you may want to consider that. To give you an example, I once had a client who had the divorce papers served on his wife in a gigantic bouquet of flowers at her work. Instead of the card, it was the divorce papers. You can imagine how this woman felt, at first elated that she received a beautiful bouquet of flowers, and then to see the divorce papers with all of her co-workers around her asking her, oh, who sent you the beautiful flowers? You don't want to do it that way. Remember that the way you start your divorce and the tone that you set with that often is the way that your divorce ends. And if you'd like to reach a settlement, you'll start planting those seeds right at the beginning. Once the divorce papers are filed and served, the next legal step is a thing called temporary orders. You may not need temporary orders if you and your spouse are able to come to an informal agreement that you both will abide by with respect to parenting your children and how you'll handle your family finances while you're getting divorced. But for some people, they need the help of their lawyers or the court to make a decision for them. The temporary orders really just set out your temporary parenting plan, as well as how credit cards will be paid, how you'll pay your mortgage, who will use which car. Ask your lawyer about what a reasonable amount of support would be, and a reasonable parenting plan. The nice thing too about talking about your custody and parenting plan now is that if you start it and it turns out there are things that aren't working very well, you can make adjustments before your final court orders enter. Your workbook contains lots of helpful checklists, guidelines, and information about this section. If you fill out all of the worksheets completely, be sure and take them to your lawyer. It will save you both time and money.